big balls and hard cocks and sweaty man assholes docking and gaping and smelling some ball sack little teeny stomachs and twinks that like to sing these are a few of my gay things Prancing around in Lane Bryant blouses Tying a string to the tails of mouses Putting my mouth near a fat glory hole I hope someone cute is sitting on the bowl Having my butt fucked while he calls me Stevie Taking some cum from Governor McGreevy Fisting and felching and burping up come. These are a few of my gay things. When I'm feeling bad, I simply get some shit on my dick, and then I don't feel so sad. I'm bored. Yeah, me too. I hate rainy days. I got a game for ya. Who the hell? You. Shut up! What's that you're holding? It's a new game! Poop shoots and ladders! That doesn't look like fun! Quiet! Yeah, and you smell like whiskey! Ah, fuck this! Let's play another game! It's called Fuck Fuck Goose! Everybody got a circle! But there's only two of us! Shut up! I'm calling the police! Oh, fuck this! Who the hell was that? I don't know, but I'm scared! Poop shoots and ladders! And fuck fuck goose! Fun for the whole family! From your friends at Parento Game! Parento Games! Ow, my fanny! Steve, SOS, I need milk immediately! Coming soon to the Opie and Anthony Show, Milk Diva! World Tour! Featuring all your favorite Milk Diva hits! Live! In concert. My blood sugar level is dropping as I speak. Featuring the classic, there's a deli downstairs. There's a deli right downstairs, is there not? Who the F gets milk from Dwayne Reed? And who could forget the number one smash hit? I'll suck milk out of a cow. I'll suck milk out of a cow. I don't care. I just need milk. Plus, special guests, the milk divas. I walk into the studio and he goes, where's my milk? Why are you going to Dwayne Reed for the milk? And for the first time in over a decade, you don't bring me milk anymore. And then I'm noticing there is no milk around, so I'm like, uh, I will pass out. You sound like a madman. Well, I know I'm whining. The, the Milk, milk Diva. Diva. Coming, Coming soon, soon to the Opie and Anthony, Anthony Show. show. Opie wants milk. He only takes it from CVS or Rite Aid. Who would go to Dwayne Reed for milk knowing that the... How desperate I am right now. You get condoms and, and maybe some shampoo from Dwayne Reed. You don't get milk from Dwayne Reed. It's Martini Steve. Martini Steve. It's Martini Steve. Women these days tend to spend more time focusing on their careers than their personal needs. That's why we at the Opie and Anthony Show have developed the Daniel Bobo Curlin Awkward Sexual Interludes Audio Companion. Now, ladies, you can fantasize about being seduced by someone who has never seduced a woman ever. Oh, I'm very. I think I think I've gotten a boner, and I need to fuck someone. This 60-minute barrage of uncomfortable sex talk will have you dripping in seconds. I'd love to go down on you, and I go slowly up you. Then I just take that tug, and I and I want you to just ram that right in you. He stammers. I want it so hard. I want it so hard. You want it? He stutters. It it is up, all right. Oh, it's big. I think three and a half inches, and it's a boner. He moans uncomfortably. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, keep going. And he spends way too much time oh, I'd stick it in your ass. fixating about what he'd like to stick. Oh, I, I, I would want to stick it in your ass right now. In your hiney. I would just shove, I would just shove that cock up your ass. So ladies, if you want to get sexed up, I just want to just fuck the crap out of you. By the unsexiest voice you've ever heard. Yeah, I'm going balls deep. Order the Daniel Bobo Curlin Awkward Sexual Interludes on Audio companion today. Oh, I am. You're gonna get fucked with my bow boner. Coming up on an all new Owen Day Behind the Laughter, comedian Jim Norton opens up about his private life. So I'm on my stomach, and uh, I guess maybe a little goes in, and it's really hurting. 
I'm like, yes, stop, 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 stop. And the work that goes into creating a great joke. And I just have to keep stop, 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 stop. And she's like, just relax, you're tensing up. I'm like, of course I am. Trying to fuck me in the butt. How does a famous comedian hone his craft? And she's getting annoyed at me. She's like, just relax. And I'm like, I'm trying to relax. And then a little bit like, stop, 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 stop. I have to shit, I have to shit, I have to shit. Jim Norton opens his heart. I'm gonna shit, I'm gonna shit, I'm gonna shit. Ah, la, la, stop, stop. And his sphincter. And then she stopped and I ran into the bathroom because I had farts. And we all know farts equal funny. And I, and I fucking push out like... <laughs> hysterical laughter and soiled bed sheets. I kept saying, how much is in? She's like, not much. When we go behind the laughter with comedian Jim Norton. Hey, Sam. Yes, Eric? Want to go out to the bar and meet some chicks? <laughs> no. Want to oil up? Try on some singlets and wrestle? No, weirdo. Want to have a beach party with a bunch of naked, coked-up strippers playing volleyball and diddling one another? Sure. Wait a minute. What would management say? Management says no. Staging a public event of this magnitude involving exotic dancers and illegal substances would alert the authorities and cause a rift with the community. Fucking assholes! With What Would Management Say, the home version, you can enjoy the injection of milk toast opinions into your evening of shenanigans. What better way to fuck up a night of hijinks than finding out what some boring asshole in a suit has to say about a concept that he couldn't have possibly come up with on his own? Fuck this game! Fuck it! Take it back! You can't! Once you purchase What Would Management Say, the home version, you're locked into a binding, exclusive 12-month-long contract that prohibits you from playing any other games except this one under the penalty of litigation. Uh... Fuck this. Order today. A man's arms were pinned in machinery. Amazingly, he managed to dial 911 on his cell phone with his toes. The call came from inside DRS Technologies at 2 a.m. Thursday morning. Help me! Help me. Okay, what are you stuck in? What type of machinery? I'm stuck in a beehive. How are you calling me? I'm dialing with my rear claws, and I just shit on my phone. With his arms pinned, he was able to tell Cruz how to find him. I'm really queer. I'm really queer. Do you hear him? I mean, I'm over here. It's amazing. He's a lucky man. And that's how you dial a phone with your feet. Raised in the wilds of the Australian outback, a new breed of hunter exists in pursuit of the most elusive prey. Vagina. Vagina. Anthony Dundee, the hymen hunter. You want a chick for a busted hymen? You look in a vagina. Out of the wilderness and into the crowded streets of Sydney, looking for untouched teen girls. Let me see your hymen. Is your hymen intact? I believe your hymen ain't even intact. Join Anthony Dundee, the hymen hunter, in his ongoing investigation. Let me blow into a vagina. I know. You could, you could hear the hymen. Your fucking hymen's busted. Will he ever find the tight teen snatch? Crikey, there's probably a giant penis cracked open your hymen. I bet she was blowing bush oyster all over the place. Yeah. Tune in to find out. Anthony Dundee. Holy fuck. Hymen hunter. Fucking hymen? Can you can't come. Coming up next on an all-new Meet the McGregors. Mr. Mac invites over Robbie from next door to build a birdhouse. I've got a special job for you today. Oh, and steady. That's the way. But Mr. Mac has been drinking bourbon all afternoon and has a few other ideas. Now you missed a spot right up there. That silly drunk spills paint all over young Robbie. Guess who doesn't have a change of clothes? Just take off your clothes. I'll help you clean up. Yeah, that feels good, doesn't it? Someone better call the authorities. Mr. McGregor has another naked boy in his house. Now, I'm going to take a picture to remember the day we spilled the paint. Yeah. That's what the cops call Exhibit A. The fun really starts when Mrs. McGregor comes home and finds a dirty shoebox full of Polaroids under the bed. It all goes down tonight on Meet the McGregors. The following is a paid advertisement. The Andy Rooney Celebrity Juice Master, the latest innovation in home health products, now comes with a step-by-step -step video guide for you to follow along with at home. You ever notice when you put two lemons under your shirt, you look like a 12-year-old girl? This 90-minute instructional video hosted by long-winded pontificating Andy Rooney has nothing to do with making fruit juice. You might have seen a photo of me and my friends having a lemon party. I was the one on the bottom getting a kiss and my dick sucked. It does, however, contain the 
incessant senile ramblings of an elderly newsman. Never notice after you eat the ass of an 80-year-old man, only lemons will take that flavor out of your mouth. What does this video have to do with juicing? Zero. You ever try to shit a mango pit and you wind up pulling the towel rack off the wall? It's the Andy Rooney Celebrity Juice Master. Now with a step-by-step instructional video hosted by Andy Rooney himself. Dr. Cronkite, who I love, is turning into the color of a banana right now inside a coffin. He's rotting, much like fruit would do. Order today. I don't know what a papaya is good for. I know Ed Bradley had one growing on his neck. I really should have died in 1985. I'm a little teapot. <laughs> Short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. Put a finger in my backside and come shoots out. There is the closet. I should step out. <laughs> Continuing on with remembering Steve C. Ten years has gone by and Jimmy Norton. Yes. <laughs> Jimmy. I literally can't hear his name without saying yes. <laughs> it, it's it's just one of those voices that you, you constantly slip in. And now because it's so dated now, unless you were a, a hardcore fan of the show. Yeah. If you just do it right now, just people think you're brain damaged to just do Steve's voice out of nowhere. Well, when, when, even when we get a call on the morning show, I'm just trying to turn my volume down here a little bit. So I'm being, I'm popping because I know I'm going to go yes more than once. Um, if someone calls in named Steve, I just do it. Like he's really, it, it just became ingrained in my head. Uh, I'll, I'll never hear Ramon again without hearing his voice. Um, and whenever I hear Ramon, I don't really hear myself doing it. When I think of Ramon, I think of him and, and the bits he would do. It's weird that yeah, the, it. Uh, we talked about this a little bit with uh, with some of the other people here that have been uh, kind enough to lend their time for this. Uh, the Ramon bit started off as Steve's thing because XM yeah. wanted him to just think outside of the box of traditional sure. production, and he came up with this weird nonsense. Which, by the way, I went and listened to one of them, and one of the 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 things his name is Epstein. That's for Epstein. Yeah, yeah, I vaguely remember that. I haven't heard that in years. Yeah, oh, my so fucking mic is collapsing. <laughs> Um, You're panicking. Epstein? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So this Ramon bit was just something weird he would do, and then we'd hear it during the breaks, and then it became something on air. But you took it to a different level. You just did it like a dice bop, now it's mine kind of thing, where you started doing Ramon impressions as your prank phone calls or ruining an interview or a call or something like that on purpose. And a lot of people just think the Ramon bit was synonymous with, with Jim, but it really, it came from Steve. It came from Steve. And the whole thing was, I was, I was goofing on, because he would always, Ramon, wash this. Yeah. Ramon was the name of like the house boy, the homoerotic house boy, or whatever it was. Um, and so when I would do Ramon, I was mocking Steve's inflection. But it was uh, Steve started Ramon. It came from him. So yeah. when I hear it in my head, uh, occasionally I'll think of those bits. But people a lot of times ask me to do Ramon, which I can't do because it hurts my throat. Right. But I'll think of him and his uh, Ramon. Well, uh, he was well, much more subdued. An- another part of that that the audience didn't get the uh, the the privilege of seeing, but was Jim would act it out in studio whenever that would happen. It wasn't just him doing the voice. He would he would do the mannerisms or whatever delicate things Steve yes. was doing. <laughs> yes, I was doing this thing where because Steve was very uh, he was very jittery, <laughs> jittery. But as a guy, he was very caricature a bull. Mm-hmm. Like he was a character as a guy, and he would do all these. These, uh, these, ma- no, 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 like these yeah. mannerisms. Scroll um, with his phone. Scroll, a distinctive voice. Um, you know, he liked uh, having something to say. Like Steve liked when he knew the answer to something. Like, yeah, no, it really, like he would get that weird little head shake when he knew he was right about something. And so he was very caricaturable. Um, and and I, I, here's what I love about him he had such a good sense of humor about himself. Like, he could take a beating better than anybody. He didn't mind being made fun of. He didn't mind being caricatured if it helped the show or if it worked. Um, you know, he was really, he contributed so much to that show, not just with production and on air, but like he's a part of the fabric of that show. Like of so many of the funny things that came from that show came from Steve. 
besides the Ramon bit, is there anything that comes to mind, any moments, any memories of Steve that really stand out? Like, oh my God, I can't, I, I forgot he did this or this bit was all about him. What I, what I remember about Steve, what the greatest thing uh, that I think of with him was, again, his ability to never be upset by it. Or if he was, he didn't show it. Um, and it was, it, it's the sign of somebody who is truly hilarious who truly understands being funny and what being funny is, is to never ever be upset if you're the one being made the bit. Um, I have a weird memory of Steve. I remember, and I was happy I was able to do this for him, um, was when we were going to LA one time on his birthday. We were flying from uh, Newark to LA and Open Ant and myself flew first. It was in the contract. And the rest of you poor bastards had to fly in the back of the plane. <laughs> And it was it was Continental Airlines and it was the really good lay flat seats. It was before like everyone had lay flat seats. Yeah. This was the planes that when you got this was like the international first. And you were like, oh, fuck. And I remember it was Steve's birthday. And I'm like, do I give him do I take his seat and coach <laughs> and do I do it? And uh, I went up and I actually walked to the back to where he was sitting and I was like, I, I didn't want to do it because it was like I had a great seat and he had a <laughs> shitty little seat in the back. But and I he gave was him a my giant seat. guy, too. He was a giant fucking guy. Um, and technically, as the producer, he probably I don't know if he was the producer at that point or if Ben was. He might. You know what? He might not have been because I think I remember talking to Ben in the back at that point. Um, but I remember giving him my seat and first for his birth, as a birthday gift. And they said that he sat up there and just fucking chatted up a storm. <laughs> 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 he ruined everybody's flight. Dude, I love that so much because I can picture him just being chatty. You know, Steve was a chatty, like just being happy that he was there. But when they told me he chatted up a storm and fucking drove everybody nuts, like that made it worth it to me. I'm like, yeah, I'll take six hours in the back to know that he wrecked somebody <laughs> else's flight. <laughs> it's fucking over exuberance and happiness. Uh, that, that is a great memory of Steve. Yeah, uh, it's, a weird, it's a weird memory too. And I remember... You know, uh, because of course I knew him from WNEW. So Steve, I talked to in, in the uh, when we were kicked off the air, and he yeah. produced my first two records. He did the audio for them. I remember meeting him in this city, and this is two thousand two, two thousand three, and him him coming in with my it was like a drug deal with like the the, the mastered CDs, and he had this really like we would talk about will the show come back? And we had no idea what we were in for at that point, the 26 month wait before we came back to the satellite. Right. But I remember how much better he made me feel. Like he he was talking about it with some authority. And even though it turned out he was wrong, like we didn't wind up coming back, he had these little, he had this way of keeping me going and feeling okay about the situation we were in. And I know when we came back, one of the first things that obviously everybody knew is that he has to be a part of it. Steve had, you said about making you feel good. Steve had a way of motivating everybody but himself. And it's not like he was, he's not a lazy guy. He did a lot of work and stuff, but Steve was always prone to depression and, and, and yeah. fits of anger sometimes, you know, that he, he could control, but he could help talk everybody else off the ledge or help them through whatever, but he couldn't do it for himself. He had demons, you know, and and that's he's he was a good man, and you know, a lot of times good people have these these demons. And you're right; it's hard to it's hard to talk yourself out of something the way you can talk to somebody else. Because when you're angry at yourself or you're feeling shitty about yourself, it's really easy to run with that. Right. But yeah, I, I guess that was his uh, his ultimate uh, downfall was just the demons, you know. Um, and it's sad because. He was such a funny dude. Like he, he thought funny. Like so much of that production, he just came up with from nowhere. And if somebody else brought him an idea, he was always willing to hash it out, right? Uh, and explore it. He was an amazing production guy because he understood the show. And then you could bring his stuff on the air and tell him, like, what are you fuck? You're hitting a woman with an axe. What the <laughs> fuck is it? <laughs> it's like punch sound, woman scream, Opie and Anthony. That's right. <laughs> And he didn't, he would, went into one, no, no, because we, you know, and he would just listen to it and listen to your teasing him about it. Like 
every step of the way, every step of the bit, there were laughs. The final bit, yeah. um, if the bit stunk, it didn't matter. I'm sure he brought a few clunkers over the years. Um, but these fucking weird little characters. Um, the, fu- the house boy. What was that one? The fucking... Uh, um, there was one that was at, with, with the house boy. I mean, but it wasn't Ramon. Uh, am I thinking of was my tiny? Yeah, my tiny. <laughs> it was something where yeah, everything that was there, he got excited and tried to shove it up his shove it up yeah, his ass. Yeah, my yeah. tiny. Epstein, Epstein. Look and see what I've concocted. This conveniently sized apparatus will transform any ordinary tap water into a combustible fuel to be used in automobiles. It will revolutionize energy consumption as we know it. Please handle it gently. It's the only one of its kind. Quite impressive. It's most compact. Perhaps it would fit in my tiny? No! Epstein! No! No, Epstein! No! It's pointy. It's just one of a Going in! Epstein! It's almost there! It's in my tiny! Right. Back to the drawing board then. He had a very, very dark. Uh, and again, that's that's sometimes with somebody who has depression like he did, but that dark sense of humor, like that that the place his brain would go to be funny. Um, there was never a limit. And a lot of those hilarious bits or those funny things that we would all riff on those old, like the old days, the old tapes and the old fucking, uh, the things that they would find like these weird, like 1950s things. A lot of that was from Steve. Like he would bring these CDs of stuff or these ideas. Um, and we would riff on them and we got the credit for it because we were the ones making fun of it, but he didn't get the credit for being the guy that actually brought it to the table. When when Steve, and you said some clunkers, but when Steve brought in, brought in bad production, it was never like when we made fun of the interns or other people who made technically bad production. Steve's production was made too well for such a bad concept. Like yeah. you said about yeah. the, the the lady getting hit with a shovel or something, yeah. like something really gross happening in the toilet, something like that. It was really high quality well done but you're like that concept is terrible why did you put so much effort to make it sound so amazing when it really just was was poorly thought out it was a dead bit and you know it's another funny one i was thinking of this recently for no reason was uh stephen carr and and how he would wear like the fucking yeah what would he wear like the ladies uh, the dress. leopards. He he would shop at Lane Bryant because he was <laughs> much bigger before he joined all of us. Oh yeah, it's right. Was, I forgot he lost. He was a lot over three hundred yeah. something pounds. So the only place he could get clothes that looked something like Stephen Tyler would wear or or uh, uh, Dio or something was going to Lane Bryant because they just had fat woman crazy patterns, and he would buy his stuff there, and that's what he would wear on stage. Yeah, and I remember the uh, the pendulum was the song and again the hours we got out of fucking pendulum what was the name of the band his name was foundry Steven. foundry was the band um but i remember the cover that the band did a cover of steve's song and it was so good Do you remember that they fucking the other version of that where the band sent that in to us uh and it was actually really good yeah it was some famous guitarist i think you can actually buy that version on like uh on itunes and amazon and all that you did the crap another time and now you're gonna pay for what you've done you better run at all i can take a while you're screaming in my ear back is gonna break if you push me one more time i'm getting hit of it my blood's getting cold you chase me into something that i can't control if you see me come and let's get out of my way when we found Foundry, the, the music, we wow. made Steve come in and sing it live. So we tried to recreate his outfit. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that, that that's the old XM studio? That was our house? old office. Yeah, the old, the old office. Right, yeah. right, right. So, yeah, we had to dress him guitar. up to look like <laughs> look like himself. And then he had to come into the studio and sing it live. His big fucking rings and his gaudy jewelry, his like his, his uh, like flea market yeah. fucking silver jewelry. He was a character, man. Steve is one of those guys. He was just everything he did was Steve-ish. 
Does that make any sense? Like, you know, that's how you executive produce. Like all that shit. It's just, yeah, that's a hundred percent Steve. He was almost like a brand as a human being. Like there are things that are Steve Carlisi brands yeah. and coming in and saying that's how you executive produce as he got the wrong guy. I mean, that's a, that's to me the most Steve moment I can probably think of. Yeah. We, we talked about Corey there. Uh, there's him with the, uh, the album yeah. cover when we debuted his entire album. He looked good there too. He looked really good. Yeah. He had, uh, I think he had this, the surgery at that time and he, he was doing a good job keeping the weight off uh, at that moment. Uh, yeah. Steve had those ridiculous leather shoes that were expensive. Like these were not cheap shoes, but he bought leather shoes that had the flames on them. Yeah, like they were like three hundred dollars shoes, and he was so proud of them. And we're like, Steve, what are you doing? They're not good shoes. I mean, the fact that he wear <laughs> dress shoes—I mean, dress shirts with flames. Yeah, dress shirts with flames. Every now and then, I just get a little nostalgic with Steve. I don't do that with a lot of people, but they're just thinking back, and it's like he was just. He was crazy and messed up like everybody else, but he was just inside too. He had this giant, nice person in him. Like he would do things sometimes unexpected just to be nice. Like if he remembered your birthday, he bought you breakfast and you're like, what, what are you doing? And it's like, oh, I bought you breakfast at your birthday. It's like, yeah, oh, I'm surprised you remember that because we were not very caring and giving people on that show. We didn't give, I mean, other than Jim's birthday, nobody's birthday was really made. Uh, <laughs> because I also lied and said it was my birthday every day. People just finally wanted to get me to shut up about it so they honored the one day it actually was. Opie and Anthony celebrate Jim Norton's birthday. It's oh my birthday! This is ridiculous. Happy birthday, Jimmy. From all of us at the Opie and Anthony Show. And Steve, that was Steve's idea, too, with, with Jimmy Day for his birthday. Figures. He got the big giant, uh, like the tranny penis cake that was That's coming. That's right, Sabra Cadabra, too. Was that, didn't he get Sabra Cadabra to play? He got Sabra Cadabra to play. Cadabra yep. to play. Um, there was no, uh, Voss's, it was an anniversary of Voss's sobriety, so he had like a bong cake made and and all of it. like he always had these creative ideas to do really yes. weird shit didn't he come up to with the name a bronchish tail a bronchish tail when we when we did Voss with the, um, the production piece yeah production piece his production was so fucking good like you know again even when it was bad it was still so definably Steve Robert De Niro it's not what you say it's what he sees in his directorial debut we can't accept that starring Chaz Palminteri I didn't give it to you I gave it to your son and Rich Voss Chloe Beans I want my money a Bronx tale Beans you can't dodge me forever come on what are you doing about what are you yelling about huh John, I got a problem with this guy over here, Louis Beans. This guy owes me 20 and it's been two weeks now and every time he sees me, he keeps dodging me, John. Should I crack him one or what? The struggle of an idiotic Jewish comedian stammering his way through a few lines of film dialogue with a genuine Hollywood actor. Listen, see, sometimes violence is not the answer. Is he a good friend of yours or not? Nah, John, I don't even like him. Well, there's your answer right there. Look at it this way. It costs you $20 to get rid of him. He's never going to ask you for money again. He's never going to bother you again. He's out of your life for $20. Come on, you got off cheap. Uh, you're right, John. You're always right. A Bronx tale. How do you know the right answer all the time, Johnny? Well, I try to keep my eyes and ears open all the time, and I read. You read? Yeah, I read. Come on. Come on, let's go to Mario's next door and get something. He had yeah, that man. ear that, you, it, that not, not just now, but even at the time when we were really... Uh, you know, doing well that a lot of shows didn't really put that much emphasis into their production. Right. Steve did. He heard things throughout the day. He was writing down notes of like, oh, you flubbed this thing or you this guy said something that could be taken out of context. And then all of a sudden, like a couple days later, there'd be these new bits. And like, when did I say that? I didn't even remember saying that. Or or somebody was screaming in the studio and he put it together to a song and all this stuff. And you're like, well, he just had that ear that you, I think is a lost art. I don't see or hear any other shows doing that anymore. No, and he was a, he was a pure production guy. And it's hard to find a guy like like that who knows your what you're doing as well as you do like right. he he knew the show as well as anybody on the show knew it he knew the tone of the show what would work uh, even even if it didn't work it didn't matter he understood that we were going to take it and somehow try to get something out of it um yeah he really was like and I, I hate the word fabric and i've said it before but he's ingrained in that show like to this day those names come up and it's a reflex it's like i'm not even saying hey i'll do this in honor of steve it's just he, he, yes like it's just i will for the rest of my life 
whenever I hear the name Steve, even if I don't say it in a social setting, yeah. uh, I'll still think of him. In San Diego, when I found out, Sam told me. Um, I, I, we were in the hotel doing Comic-Con, um, and, I, and I got the, uh, the, the when horrible. you found out? Yeah, yeah. It was, we, uh, were, uh, we were still miserable. on the air, and uh, there was like half an hour left to the show. I was in the back office, and uh, MJ called me. With the inf- uh, with the news and what happened, so I had to sit there for like half an hour just waiting for the show to end, and then had right. to go and, and tell everybody that this happened. And you know, then we addressed it the next day. We did the the special and, and all that. But geez, I mean, the, the 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 for it to happen the way that it happened, and he was just he had his demons, like you said. He had yeah. we all stuff did. that he just couldn't get past or couldn't handle but he was he tried such a to nice guy and he did try he tried being so like you know again a lot of guys struggle with it and i don't know if he was at the end or not i, I just don't know yeah um but I, I obviously i talked to him a decent amount of times about it um and he would struggle and then he would do really well and you know um but yeah he was a good person he was a really he was, he was a really sweet person and it, it really um, really bothered me too where when they were going to let Steve go, that Steve knew, we all knew, Steve was not meant to be in that position that he was put in. He had to by default because of the situation uh, with Ben that Steve had to be take over while we were all doing everything else. I guess so, yeah. And it was in hopes that we would get somebody else to put in there, and that never really kind of happened. Like, we, they tried the, the stunt brain thing, but that was like, he was the CBS guy, oh, and God, we were the right. XM guy, and it did just didn't work in that capacity. And then to, we were like, when we found out that this was going to happen, I remember just like, he's a production guy. He's always been a production guy. Just put right. him back in production. I love Steve. And I've told him too, that he was not, this isn't working. I, that, you know, we were all fighting at that time with him and he felt we were all ganging up and some were, but a lot weren't. And we were just trying to tell him, it's like, this isn't, you're not meant to be in this position. It's not working out, but he should be, he should go back into production and they just wouldn't, uh, put him in that spot. Didn't they? Was it, and again, it's a, it's a decade ago. Didn't they say the position that that, that there was a, that they it was there eliminated was a, for eliminated, redundancy? Yeah. And we're like, well, what, redundancy means there's another executive producer. Who was that going to be? And then it was just floating forever. You know? I don't, like, yeah, I don't remember the time. Was 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 Stunt Brain during that time? Or Stunt or Brain right? was before. Was Stunt Brain was the CBS syndication? That's with, right. Out of K Rock, Free FM, whatever. They uh, forced so, that. And, and I, I we, like him. As soon they as we that left, on us. yeah, they forced that on us. And as soon as we left CBS to go strictly to Sirius XM after the merger, Stunt Brain wasn't part of the show anymore because he wasn't with this company. He was with CBS. And by the way, I don't say that to shit on. I like. I actually like him a lot. Yeah, I like Mike too uh, but, a lot. But it was one of those things where. They wanted their guy in. Right. They, CBS. Because it was just such a fucked deal having two companies and then splitting the show. We were doing six hours. We were doing the walkover. I mean, we got creative with it. The audience liked what we were doing to you know to an extent. The second but- half they liked. The first half they predominant. And we got some good bits on that first half. I mean, that 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 was uh, Baby Bird and a lot of shit happened in the K-Rock studio. Right. But it was one of those things where it didn't work. Um we know why we were kind of competing against ourselves. And I think as much as we liked the extra money and we liked doing the, the, the idea of like, Hey, we're getting on New York and Philadelphia and right. whatever. You don't like not being able to curse anymore from coming off of XM to just, you know, you know, can we say hiney hole? Like, it's just like, Oh, what are we doing? Yeah. It, it wasn't really, fun. It wasn't fun. But then Steve was there with us, I think till like 2010. And then they they blew him out, and I mean everybody has their own speculations as to why. But um, he shouldn't have been booted out like that. I I talked forever about like he should be back in production, and I think a lot of the staff agreed he should go back to production, yeah. and they just wouldn't give him that position. Uh, yeah, and there were some good production guys there. I mean Derek was great. Uh, Derek was a talented, funny Derek dude. Derek was man. awesome too. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know Derek was gone for whatever reason that yeah. we won't get into, but it, it was just sad. And and uh, 
knowing that this 10 year anniversary was coming up, I was like, yeah, you know what? We should, we should do something. He's I a can't guy. It's 10 years. We look I fondly can't, back can't at. Be, I can't believe it's been 10 years. Like it's, I, I know it has, and I know you're right, but I'm looking at this now, 2012. Like I, I cannot believe the amount of time. Yeah. Um, you know, but stuff like that, you're like, as much as it makes you very sad and it's, it's terrible. Like you, you, you learn from that. Like you learn, you look at somebody who you loved, who, who, who dies long before they should. And you go like, Hey man, that's a real thing that does happen. Like that's not something that you just hear about, or it's this intangible thing. That is something that happens and it's, it's real. It kind of makes you grateful to be alive too. Um, and it makes you realize, Hey, I'm not above that either. Like none of us are immune to, right. to dying at a young age. So, you know what I mean? Like it, 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 it kind of hits you like a shovel when it's somebody that you're that close with. Very much so. And you could probably sit here for two hours and name Steve bits. I'm like, oh my God, I forget. Like it was just, cause I don't listen to any of the old shows. It just yeah, depresses hard. me. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, but some of it's, you know, some really funny shit, but I just, you know, it depresses me because that was just such a, 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 it was a fun time. I mean, despite the fact that there were so many ups and downs, yeah. Um, it's still, you know, one of those times I'm extremely grateful for in my life, you know? We got some uh, breaking news. Backstage with ONA. Oh. And now, backstage with ONA. Here is Primetime Sam Roberts. I'm Primetime Sam Roberts. And Steve C., the developmentally disabled executive producer of The Opie and Anthony Show, showed up to work wearing effeminate capri shorts. We went to Steve to get the scoop. <laughs> Steve, what are you wearing? Shorts, Sam. No, those are capri shorts. Are they really? I thought they were just shorts. No, they go too far past the knees and they're tight. They're effeminate capri shorts. Oh, and they're fringed at the bottom. They're fancy. Do you ever like look at yourself in the mirror and think, "How can I make the guys make fun of me today?" <laughs> um, no, I actually look in the mirror and go, "I have no idea if this has any fashion relevancy whatsoever." Then I turn around and I look at my. Oh my! I have to stop this. We never stopped the backstage with ONA bit. We let it play through. Yeah. Steve is always thinking fashion and failing miserably every time. Oh, hell yeah. He doesn't fucking put on capri pants thinking they're just shorts. Is he wearing them today? Yes. Call him in here immediately. I have to see his legs. All right, let here he comes. Oh, my God. Hold on. We'll get. L let me get the rest of his backstage with ONA. He's wearing Mary Ann's pants from uh, <laughs> Gilligan's <laughs> Island. <laughs> That's exactly what. And those he has are. the skipper's body. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get him in, let's get the rest of his backstage. But he's he's lying through his teeth. Wouldn't see whatsoever. Then I turn around and I look at my fifteen fiance and I go, "Who fucking cares what they think?" I'm right. I could just wear her clothes. <laughs> no, not quite. She actually bought them for me. So she says they're trendy. I have to believe her. Yes, they're a huge trend in the gay culture right now. Are you making that up? No. Fair enough. As Steve C's mask of heterosexuality slowly slipped away, we went to ONA staff members E Rock, Mars, Travis to get their take on Steve's pants. Ew. Is that Eric? I just saw these. <laughs> you just saw what? These awful shorts. They're great shorts. Do you think those are jeans that a straight masculine man would wear? Uh, I don't think most gay people would wear those either. Hey, Mars, did you see what Steve was wearing today? Uh, I, w I noticed, yes. <laughs> what did you think? Well, at first, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was uh, long shorts until he sat up, and I saw these fuzzy knickers. <laughs> <laughs> knickers. Yeah, I think they call them knickers. <laughs> Travis, did you see Steve's pants today? I tried, Yes, I did see them. What did you think? I thought they were quite gay. <laughs> That's weird. I suppose everyone's entitled to their opinions, but if Steve's pants aren't gay, they're certainly heavily bi-curious. It seems the only thing Steve does worse than producing a radio show is convincing people he's attracted to women. I'm Primetime Sam Roberts, and this has been Backstage with ONA. Wow. Oh, damn. Steve's right outside the door. Damn. Steve. Here comes Steve. Now, I didn't notice these yeah. before. Okay. Steve. Yeah. Steve. You, you were lying. What? You, you're you always thinking about no, fashion. I'm always thinking about vanity. I'm up. Like, I don't know if vanity and you fashion. You put those on thinking they were long shorts, and you have Absolutely. no clue what a capri pants is? I don't know what capri pants Come are. On, I really don't. I'm just fixing Come the back. Thank you, sweetie. Everyone knows what a capri pants is. I really, I, I know what long shorts are, and I've got a handful of pairs. So you think those are long shorts? Yeah. They're not? No, no, not right. even close. I'll fully no. admit I'm a vain, egocentric prick, but... Let me tell you what long shorts are. Uh -huh. Long shorts are shorts that are long, yet 
The they're leg baggy. doesn't taper. They're very right. baggy and right. long. Okay. Like uh, over the weekend, I was wearing long shorts. But so okay, and so textually, if these but, were long shorts, they should end at the knee. No, no, no they should no. be big. They are big thinner. around. They are so much thinner at the end of them than they are at like mid thigh. Okay. They should just go down. If they go down all one side, those. If you watch Gilligan's Island, yeah. Marianne <laughs> is oh. wearing those exact same <laughs> pants. This is not helping. No. <laughs> These are designer, like, long shorts. Steve, I don't, no. think, I don't think there's a guy out there that could pull off the Capri pants. No. Honestly, they, are horrendous. they couldn't be gayer if they came with cum splattered on the back. <laughs> <laughs> they Jimmy, did. you don't like them? Would you wear those? No, I wouldn't. Steve, uh, Steve's pants look like something that Sasha Baron Cohen would wear as Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what he would wear. And that's trendy. Right? And well, very gay. I think Evan's oh, yeah. got the uh, the long shorts on today, which, uh, you know. Does he? Okay, so they, they'd like have to go. Abercrombie and Fitch, kind of baggy. They stay big. Yeah, let's see. Well, okay, so they go just, just below, below the knee. knee. Yes, those are like those are considered like big. sort of long shorts. They got like cargo pockets on them. They don't get all tight around the knee area. Exactly, those are guy pants. Yours are very tight everywhere, like very tight, <laughs> and, and 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 even around the bottom where they're capri'd. Hoffman from Virginia. <laughs> See, you couldn't find capri. You couldn't find those pants in the men's section, could you? No, I couldn't, but I did find them in the women's. Yeah, there, 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 there they are. are. And it's the brand that he's wearing, too. So. Holy women, shit. Women See, wear capri pants. pants. Then why would they make them in this size, though? A lot Fat of girls. women. Why are you sweating so <laughs> profusely? Well, I sweat all the time. Uh, <laughs> you're sweating like crazy. <laughs> I always sweat, though. No. Women are wearing capri pants like crazy right now. Guys, not so much. No. A lot of gay guys are. For real? Yeah, there's a big thing in uh, with very, but it's a very gay look. Like, it's a very effeminate, like, I work in the fashion industry. I'm the gayest like guy a, you've a ever bottom. seen. It's a bottom look. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Very gay. All right, I'm on the men's shorts. All right. And there's nothing that looks like those. The pants. closest right thing right is there. right there, but it, that those, comes, that up comes, to comes up to the, guy's the knees. knees. All right, so yeah. it's about it's about but, two inches below the knee. But in all fairness, no, it's to, not. But in no, all fairness to Steve, they're not the they're knee. not making capri pants that big for women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're really not. <laughs> they would be fucking huge. Wow. So I don't know if this is funny. I, I have a feeling it might be. It says, uh, and if you are wearing those hold jeans, on, hold on, you're hold wearing two hundred and sixteen dollars shorts. Wow! Jay, uh, my my chick bought them for me. So, wow. Jay from Huntington. Does anyone else picture Steve getting dressed to goodbye horses? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? It's from uh, Silence from, uh, of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Oh, 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 I'm oh, crying okay. over <laughs> right. you. Oh, right, right. Okay, I, I knew there was a reason why that would be funny. You like these capris? Would you fuck me? <laughs> Neither I would I. <laughs> I, I fuck me hard. Steve shorts are made by Victoria's Secret FFS. Their true religion? Yeah. True religions. Not many guys can pull off the true religion no, thing. No. Voss wears true religion yeah, jeans. Exactly. Hey, Bobby Kelly wears them too, doesn't he? Yeah, you, the what beacon of masculinity, Bobby Kelly. E Rock's got something. Again, Voss was a, a weight problem. <laughs> Fucking purse. And Bobby's sexy point look. E Rock's going to the mic. I thought Steve might want to just complete the outfit. <laughs> what is oh, that? A Lane oh, Bryant nice. shirt? Yeah. <laughs> nice uh, animal pattern Lane Bryant shirt from his glory days. I think Steve. Glitter. Should, would you wear that? I, I I have worn it. Give me the thing. How are you going to put it on? Put Good. Glitter on it. That's right. Prove him wrong, Steve. Yeah. Put on this shirt. Oh, please. I'm already. Now tuck your penis between your legs. <laughs> I'm already in the hole. Look at the pockets. They're like little sweet buttons. They're Mm -hmm. oh, he's got a little, uh, Steve, you don't have to wear on. everything your girl buys you. Sometimes you gotta say, I can't my girl, wear this. Yeah, my girl buys yeah. me stuff. I'm like, what are you, insane? I can't fucking wear yes. this. My you girl brought me rubbers. I won't wear them. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Sometimes you have to say, you know, nice thought, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm returning this. Women don't buy things. It's an old hack <laughs> point, but oh boy. <laughs> wow, this is, <laughs> this this is three sparkly. X, by the way. It's a three X. So, okay. Fucking hot. Kind of, um, everyone, get your cameras. everyone Sorry, noticed everybody. your cover, by the way. My girl bought them. <laughs> but she did. 
But that doesn't mean you go I, on and, you know, the, and where to work the next day. The hole in his story is that he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. But he knew that they were designer jeans. And yeah. that they were oh, I know to be now because and Sam's been doing this for about a half an hour. So I call and by the way, the hole in his story is in the back of these pants. <laughs> <laughs> Danny is exactly right because the second I started making fun of him, he said, Sam, these are designer jeans. These are trendy jeans. These jeans are worth more than your life. <laughs> That's the, why I stopped the backstage with ONA because he made it sound like, I don't know. I, I, I don't pay attention to fashion. No, he knew. He knew, knew very well. He's very proud of his fashion let, sense. Let me say hi to Dan in Philly. Hello, Dan. Hello, Dan. Good morning, boys. Hey. Hey, uh, check the flap over the zipper. I believe, if my information is correct, that the flap is reversed for women's pants as opposed to men's pants. Um, no, no, no. The, like, look at the front. What do you mean, like? No, you're. It's flapped over the same yeah. way. No, that's guys. Oh my God, they're tight around your crotch. They are yeah, really Jesus. tight around your crotch, huh? I'm oh, back. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm fully back at the gym after after a two month absence and fucking eating like horribly. Mm. Don't they call them clam diggers or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> are they? I don't know. Got, clam diggers. You got yeah, two, you got two the... clams in the sand. <laughs> I think they're men's capri pants, but I don't know. Still, still right. guys aren't wearing capri pants. Yeah. There's a huge. This is a pretty hip place. This Sirius XM is anyone walking around with capris? No, I'm telling Sam. you, like capris are a look that is 100% effeminate. Like guys who wear capris are trying to pull off a very effeminate gay look. It's not a cool thing for guys to wear capris and try to come off as masculine. Yeah, they, it, it's really not. Mm -hmm. It's uh. Mm -hmm. But look at my calves. Yeah, you have big calves, but they're they're not long shorts. They're, they're capris. What the hell is that, Iraq? <laughs> Yeah, Iraq is obsessed with Steve's breakfast and yeah. oh, no. it every day. With everybody else's, too. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. With the whole concept of this. We get another Nikki sighting. Oh, Nikki. Uh, I must. What is hey, it? Wait a minute. He's coming back. Why is Nikki coming is back? Like <laughs> yeah. Nikki. He made the face. He is that fried chicken with cheese? <laughs> no. It's, what uh, are you eating for breakfast, Steve? Uh, leftover buffalo wings. Oh, thank God you're not eating like shit anymore. Oh, yeah. Steve, what are you doing? <laughs> Buffalo you had surgery, wings. Steve. Why don't you go have some egg whites? What you just, oh, I had egg whites. Hold on, but Sam just brought up a great yeah. point. Didn't you just a mere 10 minutes ago say that you stopped eating like shit and you hit the gym again? Uh, I did hit the gym. After eating like shit for two months? <laughs> I never, I never said, quote? You I, just said it. I did start eating in the gym, and I, and, I, and I have been eating like shit, and I continue to eat like shit. Why eat like shit? You, you know what, dude? Uh, uh, truth, you. I'm an addict, and I don't drink. I don't, oh, do, I don't do drugs. Yeah. I don't smoke. Uh, Why can't but, you be a salad addict? Yeah, I don't know. I because salad sucks. At least right now. You're right though. Salad I'm done sucks. With salads too. I fucking hate them. I eat because I'm unhappy. I fucking punch and salads. And I'm unhappy because I eat. <laughs> Give me a salad so I can punch it. <laughs> I fucking hate salads. Steve, Steve's right. I'm with him on that. He's soaking wet. <laughs> Why I sweat. What the fuck you on? That you're sweating so much. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We all have hoods. Oh yeah. Well There's yeah. I did, I did have wings. two monsters already. What? I have a. I did two monsters already. I have two a communicate from Steve's girl. Ooh. Oh. Okay. The lovely. True, religion brand jeans. Mm -hmm. Try under men's shorts. That's what we've been trying to yeah. look at. That exact thing. We're on the website. I, I believe they're men's shorts, but the problem is I don't really see guys wearing the capris, that's all. Ones. But if you want to wear the capris, then, yeah, what, what, who am I? Steve, if these are the ones that you're wearing... I dress like shit everywhere. Then my legs are too short. You don't pull it off. Uh, right. You don't pull it off. <laughs> you should just be shorter and wear them as long pants. <laughs> Chop my calves they, probably, up. they probably made him that big as a goof and, and, and put him in the store. Let's see oh, if anyone buys different. these. <laughs> I thought the, same but the back's different. Fringe is not in, by the way. Fringe is so far from being in right now. Fringe is so 1974. But those have fringes yeah. on them. The ones he's looking at right yeah, there? Yeah, those are not. Are, fringe is well, not in. You got in. the fringes too on them? Yeah. The ones yeah. that look like you took a cheese grater to the. To Jeansize.com to check size. That's what Jeff's saying. Uh, J E E N size.com. Right, Jeff? I like hillbilly yeah. uh, jeans you're wearing. Like the hillbillies would wear those barefoot. Sam, drag me down there and they eat possum. Uh, you look like the Hulk in regular pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <what about> the, <laughs> <laughs> the Hulk is cool though. Yes. Are we friends with yeah. Al Q yet? Where are we at with them? Actually, I think Mars made some headway with the host because. Okay, fuck it. What's next? I, I, th <laughs> I think we have somewhat of a working relationship with them. Can now. we drag Steve over there and, and, and get their opinion? Can we bring one of them in here so they're on our show? So can, we, can we tell them we have an opinion ask, on men's pants? Ask Larry. He's pretty cool. Oh, you know, you know Larry? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I met these guys a few oh, weeks ago. Larry. Go shopping? Oh, where? Oh, hey. Go shopping. <laughs> 
Can we bring one of those yeah, out? Yeah, we'll um, they might be doing their own show. Oh my yeah. god, that's, there it is, the Hulk pants. Yeah, that's what Steve looks like. <laughs> the Hulk pants. Yes. The Hulk's too big. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry or when I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pride is at the end of the month. That 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 would be a place where we'd see some Capri uh, some Capri shorts on gentlemen. Oh, the Gay Pride. Uh... Yes. Mm. Which you'll be going to? Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Some interviews. <laughs> I'll probably yeah. wear normal man pants though. No, I just want to make sure you're going. <laughs> Get some good audio out of the whole thing. Man. Yes. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. <laughs> Why don't we start with this? Uh, Sam true. took Steve and his Capri pants into OutQ, the gay <laughs> channel here at Sirius XM. The guys don't really like us. Well, they changed their opinions a little. A little bit? Oh, yeah. Did they? All right. And uh, how did it go? It went well. They uh, were also not approving of Steve's wardrobe choice. Really? Yeah. They thought he looked like a giant asshole. Really? Not in those words, but... Oh. But yeah. not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> we got some highlights. Steve going on out cue with his Capri pants. And the question that, that began our last hour was, if you were a big old butch straight guy, why are you wearing Laura Petri pants? Okay. Why I'm is it suddenly you. 1962 when you were on the Dick Van Dyke show? <laughs> what's up okay? with that? What's up with that? What's, what's your damage, Heather? <laughs> <laughs> so, he's here. Uh, Say hello. <laughs> Introduce yourself to the kids at home. <laughs> Fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hi you guys. walked in. Yes. You walked in. You walked in. Missy. Wearing capris. Don't be mad. Wearing, wearing uh, why capris. Are you okay. I'm I wearing guess. Wranglers, and, okay. I'm the, and I'm the gay guy in this, the room. But go is, ahead. For the record, this will be the last day. Hi, I'm Steve. Uh, hi, Steve. I'm Steve. the executive producer of the Opie and Anthony Show. So that's how the executive producer of the Opie and Anthony Show makes his presence felt for the very first time on OutQ. How he was introduced. Yes. And the gay guys wearing Wranglers. Yes. Great. Great, Steve. <laughs> Anyone notice that the gay guy sounds like a Muppet? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, ex Kermit. Steve explains his pants. When, when so we go to get coffee. We're oh, uh, when Steve said fucking assholes, yeah. was he commenting on what they were doing when he walked in? <laughs> or just yes, he meant that as a fucking verb, yeah. not an adjective. <laughs> so we go to get coffee. We're minding our own B.I. business, trying to get back in the room before Christine W. stops singing her song. Like good old Queen should. Exactly. And there he is in, and they're homemade. Okay. Capri pants. <laughs> you know why they're homemade? Holy shit! Did he make these pants and that's why we can't no. find them on the fucking website? No, he's claiming that they were purchased. He's adamant Wait about the fact. Wait a minute. He had his they chick, would, uh, they would Hold know, on a minute. These guys are saying they're homemade. We can't find the fucking pants Steve's wearing. His fiance called their show and did say that she bought them. So, for what it's worth. And there he is in... And they're homemade. Okay. Capri pants. <laughs> you know why they're homemade? Because honestly, we're not supposed to have Capri because pants. Because honestly, boys our size, they don't make them for us. They don't make them for but us. I got these. I these are these are true religion like guy shorts. Or are they Lane Bryant? Did you buy them at like a <laughs> oh. fat woman's store? <laughs> Uh, no, really. No, I think Let's break it down. I think they were actually, to be true, completely honest, my uh, my fiance bought them online. Your fiance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so I, think I <laughs> wouldn't bet you. Oh, damn. <laughs> looks like looks yeah. like some radar went up in that <laughs> studio. Yeah, him. Fiance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right. Holy <laughs> shit. Sure thing. He's getting his ass kicked. He thought he was just going to go in there and like the gay right. guys were going to yeah, talk yeah. about his fashion. Oh my god! Got smashed to bits. Bought them online. Your fiance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> so I yeah. think I wouldn't have bet Keith to how how long he would mention his female partner. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> but clearly, clearly she has her own plan right now because she's letting you walk around like that. But well, that's another story. Because honestly, <laughs> ain't nobody gonna do okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about the chick sitting on your nose, capris, baby. <laughs> Ew. Maybe they're girls' capri pants. So that's but what we're thinking. That too. would have to be a big girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're big girls. They I'm, make plus size now. Francine, we can't find these uh, yeah. Capri pants. I'm telling you. Maybe they were on sale. But the the, the guys from Alcu were saying that they're homemade. I think they maybe saw they're the true fringe. religion fucking jeans, and and then they were cut up to look like capris. I hope not. But if they were last seasons, they're probably not going to be online. Mm. All right. She brings up a point. I love shopping. <laughs> They continued, just 
killing Steve. Yeah. So at what point, my, I guess the question is, at what point do these become short? Ever? Or if I took a scissor above and... Above the knee. Above, above the, the knee. knee. Above the knee. So if literally I took a scissor and cut these things above they the knee... They would become shorts. And then you would be And then you would be the guy wearing shorts at work with... Sam disagrees. With very, like, very tight shorts. <gasps> well, they're not that tight. Oh. Because honestly, Keith, should I say it? Wait, let me see, say it. No package. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the room just got cold. <laughs> oh, no package. Uh, the gay wow. guys say Steve's got a little dick. <laughs> they are fucking tearing him apart. Th- did Steve punch it all? Did no. he get any lines in? Steve got no lines Nothing. in. Nothing. What the Not one. We all know Steve. how good he is at uh, improv. 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 It's, he's, he's the best. Oh, the jeez. Oh, <laughs> You. When would these be shorts? I'd like to take the comedy bit and make it informational. <laughs> <laughs> he did the same thing he does in here. He just represented the situation at hand. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And they called him Heather, right? I don't know. Did they? Yeah, yeah. No, heifer, heifer. Heifer. Oh, oh, it sounded like, it sound like Heather. Heather. It they did sound like Heather. They called him a heifer because he's fat. All right, oh, and finally, funny. this. That is funny. Steve on out cue with his caprice. So now you know what you know what those are in 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 when two gay guys see that it's like he needs extra padding on his knees for when he goes down on somebody. <laughs> Work. Because <laughs> you know, because scraped Work. knees are not a hot look. So wait, do you have a you have a leg tattoo? He does yeah, I do. What's that? It's a uh, orchid. Okay. What, An orchid. You, mm-hmm. Are you were you a florist in another life? Uh, you know, it's just I I thought they looked pretty. I saw them. They looked pretty. Yeah. I, I thought they looked pretty. <laughs> <laughs> this big butch man talking about his Keith, tattoos Keith, is Keith, pretty. Keith, Keith, Keith. Straight people are zany. Aren't they yeah. insane? Go on. Oh my God. So he got his <laughs> wardrobe is, is not allowed on that show anymore. No, he sounds perfect. Made, he sounds like the third mic. <laughs> yeah, he's making us all look bad. He does sound third mic on that show. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They did yes. say that uh, they would come on our show. Yeah. Right. Could you have rephrased that? <laughs> a, a rhyme? <laughs> <laughs> he got killed. Yeah, he got. She got the cum joke. Of course she did. It's with the U. It is with the U. <laughs> oh, why? Nice. Uh, yes, I just thought that I would <laughs> put them on with my shoes. <laughs> Thank you. So you get a flower tattoo. Yes, I do. They grow in the earth. Continuing with uh, remembering Steve Sieve on the 10 year anniversary of his death. Sam Roberts and Travis Teft. Hello, guys. How are you? Hi. It's been. Uh, oh, you took a, a very somber, a very very somber tone. I'm sorry. Ooh, should I be really... excited? Well, I mean, I mean, if you know, it's very like you know, talking to Steve C. We used to bring it up on O and A, like when the uh, news channels for the first ten years they don't do it anymore, but for the first ten years of 9/11, right? When they would slow down their regular peppy morning music mm-hmm. because it was the 9/11 show, and then on 9/12 they would bring it right back up and go like, you know, well, like I, you just said that you know, ten years we're this, and then uh, we're doing this now, and then after that we're never doing this again. Yeah, that's true. It's on the like, 11th anniversary, it'll be like, she's the girl all the bad guys want. Wait, what happened 11 <laughs> years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Zia here? Is that what's going on? <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, so we're talking about Steve C. We've been talking to uh, all members and people who have uh, worked on the Opie and Amphi show or worked with Steve in some way, shape, or form. Sam and Travis are no different. In fact, Sam and Travis were hired by Steve C. to work on the Opie and Anthony show. Can you guys give us a little uh, maybe recalling what that was like? What was your, your screening process to being hired? Uh, I think I, I, I think I was able to get hired because they needed bodies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is true. Yeah, and I, was, and I was better than than Ricky, the other intern. <laughs> right, and the and the, I remember there was one and in, the first intern quit <laughs> like on the first day. Ricky, Ricky was the intern, and I remember because Travis's internship semester. I was just listening. I was just a fan, and I remember listening and. Uh, Maybe my favorite thing of that whole semester was uh, them going, why is it taking Ricky so long to get breakfast? And it yeah. turned out because he couldn't find the diner that was spe- that was called the diner with the blue, blue awning. awning. Yeah. <laughs> like, he what? was looking for the blue awning. Literally a <laughs> diner called the blue awning. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw other diners with blue awnings, but they weren't called. The Blue Awning Diner. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> what's I, up? I have a, I we have a running gag on Jim and Sam, <laughs> where every time a celebrity dies, we somehow 
twist the conversation into talking about uh, uh, what's his, you know, uh, John Larroquette, uh, John Larroquette <laughs> from Night Court, and how great John Larroquette is. And I still don't know how many people listening or even in the room are aware that like <laughs> Travis and I are doing this every time. But what I won't allow is for Travis to somehow shift this into a Ricky memorial special because <laughs> that's what he's doing <laughs> i'll be Do you have any for... Ricky segments we can play <laughs> uh, i think the, we just did the one that actually aired was the awning um i will be more than happy to talk about john larroquette in night court because it, it's fantastic and <laughs> he's the only cast member coming back to the reboot we brought that up mainly it's sure it's mainly when other successful. celebrities have have passed away i remember when i went in for uh my internship uh, interview. I drove down from Syracuse for it, and I was very, very excited. It was in the is in the back office, you know, the bullpen the office, office, straight ahead. Yeah. Office. No, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, and it was with it was with Steve C. And he was there. There's his big, giant, tattooed arm showing in his sleeveless shirt, <laughs> and he was going. I mean, it was so funny because like the pad and the and the pen that he would always use, they looked so small in his big bare hands. <laughs> And uh, and yeah, I mean, it was it was a great it was a great sign of things to come because Steve was like the funnest and most creative guy that you could ever ask for. But there was just something so funny about watching him try because he's like this natural, like creative rock star guy. And so watching him try to put on this semblance of professionalism and be an office guy that is sitting there like he was really trying to interview interns and i remember like even then going like this is very like it was very it was it was it was very uh i guess emblematic of the whole o and a culture cuz it was like we were really trying to maintain to maintain some degree of professionalism but it was i mean it was a very thin veil i also want to point out too when sam was coming in for his internship um Sam was not a broadcasting major like any of us or, or taking any of those courses and stuff uh, for a college degree. Sam was a psychology major. Sociology. Sociology major. So he, him coming in was a different mindset than everybody else that was coming in that wanted to do radio and, and, and production and stuff. I could only imagine because we'll get into what happened after Sam was hired. Sam just sitting there analyzing Steve the entire time and maybe trying not like now he just would be opening openly laughing in his face as if this was happening. Like if 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 Sam was sitting there and Steve was trying to talk to him seriously, Sam would be laughing at him, not taking it seriously. Back well, then, you're probably like biting your lip, analyzing all of this, going like, I, I can't wait to get hired to talk about all this. Steve. Well, no, it was actually Steve very early on that gave me probably what ended up being the most valuable advice in my entire career. And I don't even know if he was doing it as advice. He, he was the one who was like, Sam, look, like you can't like just fuck around. Like you can't just drive everybody nuts. If you're going to do it, it has to be for the air. Right. That was Steve's thing. He was like, you can do whatever you want. We can do whatever you want. We can be as absurd as you want, but it has to translate for the air. You took that advice? Oh, yeah. And so from that point on, it was like, it was like, that's why, like, every single time I was on the air, it was some, like, obnoxious, like, backstage thing or, or picking a fight with somebody or something just because it was like, what well, we can. Steve was right. Like, Steve, so we can take all of this ludicrousness that's happening and turn it into stuff for the air. And that's why, like. So you're saying Steve, we have Steve to blame. I mean, I think we're all in a better position for it, yeah. personally. I mean, Steve was a, but like that's what that's what Steve would do. I mean, Travis, you know, that's well, yeah, Steve you weren't allowed to like do anything in the office without being prepared to go into the production booth and turn it into something. He would literally, pick, but he would come with me. That's how like yeah. the inventor and Epstein came up. That's how all like the weird characters. We Whenever did. Sam would do something, it was very caveman like with Steve. It, the, the equivalent of when they would drag a woman by her hair and drag her into mm -hmm. the cave. Sam would be mouthing off or doing something. Steve would go, up, go. sit up, grabs Sam by the, the neck, and like, we're going, and then they'd go into the back studio to record something. And 
the beauty of that would be that we get into the back studio and Steve and I would literally just put our brain, we'd put our brains together and just go like, well, how does this translate? And we would just start making each other laugh with such ridiculous stuff that we would come out with stuff that like before we would get it on the air to have Opie and Anthony and Jimmy being like, what do you, what is this? Like we would play it for you guys and you guys would be like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what, <laughs> what is this? And yeah. we'd go, well, it made us, it made us laugh. I don't know. We're going to put it on yeah, the air. Making, making production with Steve was like, you've never seen somebody have more fun just figuring out where to go, you know? Yes. Like, yes. And the kernels that he would give you. Uh, like he'd go like, ah, I want to do like an inventor, like, like keeps like his assistant keeps putting stuff in his ass or something. And I'm like, no, I like that. Okay. Okay. Well, what if he's oh, like, wait, a is this guy? the mine okay. Heine thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. And he and I, like, he's got this weird kernel that he's just thought of. And like, I'm Mr. Like, I'm never going to say that's a dumb idea. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's. Let's let's figure out what the runway on this thing is. And we start coming up with like, OK, what if we had this sound? What if we had some music? Like, what if we start really flushing this thing out? And then like the first like we would get something on the air and they go like, this is so stupid. This doesn't make any sense. Don't do that anymore. And Steve and I would go like, we got to do it again. Yeah, we got to do it again. <laughs> and we go right back to the studio and start. It's the, like, clearly, this has to be a series, right? Yeah, dude, this has to be a series. With your testicles, and look what I've done! This conveniently shaped vial contains an elixir which will increase the metabolism of anyone who drinks it. Can you imagine? This could eliminate the worldwide obesity epidemic permanently. No, let me see. No, well, I suppose if you're careful, there's just the one, and say. This would fit perfectly in my tiny. No, no, no! It's in! It's in my tiny! Well, at least it's still intact. Now, give it back. Here you go! No! My elixir! It's all over the ceiling! Epstein! You! You! Uh, well, back to the drawing board, I suppose. Now, it was good that you had that working relationship with him to make production because then on air, he was constantly, like, he would just, when he'd get annoyed with you, Sam, he would lean against you and press you into the wall. And then kept saying how your head was full of candy because he was trying to kill Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's like I would like because I would I would I would needle Steve because you know I like when pe like I like when people start hitting back. So like I would needle Steve on the air, but like and then and then he would he would, he would, he would put all his body weight against me or he'd start the rumor that still persists to this day that what, my head was full of candy, but. But I don't I don't think that there's anybody that I've ever had arguments on the air that got it more than him. Like we would laugh so hard after like off the air, like after the show at the absurdity that had happened or the fights that happened or whatever it was. It was he just got I think he got radio and that type of radio more than probably any producer we had. I want to show you this. <laughs> I've been digging through archives and stuff and I have several photos in, in different studios of him just pressing you into walls because he doesn't yeah. want to hear you speak anymore <laughs> yeah it was a fun time <laughs> uh, uh, Travis what about when he hired you I know we were we uh, that first semester we had some interns like I said the, the first intern we hired didn't show up for the first day because all of a sudden he just didn't want to be part of it so yeah. it was you it was me, Ricky, and uh, was Than was there? Guys? No, 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 no. Than was already there. Okay. Uh, who's the other? What, what was the name of the first intern? I think his name was Eugene or Gene. No, 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 no. He was the one that that we first hired and then didn't show up the first day and told us he quit. <laughs> no, but the other guy that was in my my group was uh was was the guy who did the the video. What was the song, Julia? Oh, Noah. 
Noah. That's it. Noah. That's no. Wait. No, that was Noah two. Yeah. Noah one was with you. Who's actually? Oh, pre- I, okay. I, uh, he's very well respected. Like he's a journalist and everything now. Is he? Noah Rothman is his name. I don't know. Yeah, he works for legitimate outlets. And I was like, how did that happen? But good for him. Yeah, but I just kind of remember the same thing like Sam was talking about. Like it was Steve and Ben and they bring me to the back office and Steve has no idea what questions to ask. They're just like looking for warm bodies at the time. And it was like five minutes. And I thought afterwards, I'm like, oh, I didn't get that. Like that was that was five minutes. Like. There's no possible way they're gonna call me, and then and then Steve called me like a week later, and he's like, "Okay, well, you got it," and I'm like, "All right, <laughs> cool." <laughs> like, like, don't sound so it, thrilled it, about it, but okay. yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't uh, memorable or anything, you know. Um, Neither is your career. No, that's the thing. It's just <laughs> one blurry, you know. <laughs> yeah, moderate. Just consistency though. Consistent. Yeah. That's consistent, key. very consistent, mm-hmm. but forgettable is what Sam's mm-hmm. getting. Yeah. Quite forgettable, but like, consistent. Whenever consistent. they they say Travis is here, they're like, "Oh yeah, Travis is here." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forgot, but about he's that. been here. He's been here. Um, so that's consistent. talking with uh, Anthony and Garrett about Steve. Um, we talked about how Steve was when he was purposely trying to be funny when it wasn't production, it never hit. But when he wasn't trying to be funny at all, when he was trying to be serious about it, was he was hilarious. Um, we brought up the the email where he was serious about this, that he was going to be <laughs> off for Mondays for the foreseeable future. And that's we, what I mean, by the way, about the feigned professionalism that he thought for the foreseeable future was like like you could like if you wrote in an email, I will be taking off every Monday for the foreseeable future. That that's a thing that somebody in a professional capacity. That sounds like a right. corporate term. I'll just put that in the email and it'll be okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we had explained that we had serious handled vacations different than XM. So we had to take vacations on our own time, not with the show. And Steve had accrued all these days that he had to use by the end of the year or he would lose them. They didn't want to pay him for those days. So he'd stay working. So he decided every Monday, instead of being off for like the month of December, which Roland and I used to do, um, he took every Monday off for like three months just to space out. It's like, yeah, it won't be your Mondays, so, but this way I can get everything. And everyone's like, this is a problem. We brought the email in and just hearing O and A react, it's like, you can't do this. Well, apparently he could because- I mean, that's still something that we reference to this day foreseeable future for the foreseeable future yeah because <laughs> uh, he thought it was such an airtight plan <laughs> that's great <laughs> um, yeah you know but he could i mean he had there's a if there's a you have 52 weeks in a year your vacation time expires at the end of the year you have over 52 days then yeah every monday for the foreseeable future is something you could do. That's the thing, you know, XM and Sirius handle vacation differently. XM was a foreseeable future type of company and Sirius and, was not. And now now that you think about it, like Monday is the worst day for a producer to take off for a radio show. Of course. You're coming right. back after the weekend, a lot of news yeah. hits. Yeah, you gotta be there for that. It's the most noticeable time to be gone. <laughs> God, imagine that. Like, because Howard has a three day week, right? He, he, that's just the deal he worked out. And and most shows n- nowadays work Monday through Thursday. Friday is like a best of kind of thing. Imagine just doing it the other way, where Mondays are off, but you work Tuesday through Friday. It's like, what? Don't Why worry. did you pick day. this? Don't worry, I'll be in on Thursday, Friday. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Me too. I remember there was one Steve moment. Uh, I don't even remember if it ever made the air. I think it did. But this was one of the. This is this is a, a deep cut but all of us will remember it well. We were sitting in a post-show meeting and Steve was trying to go through everything all at once. And he was like, they were like, we need this guest, we need this guest. And he's scrolling through his BlackBerry. He's holding his BlackBerry in his hand and he's scrolling his emails. And then he looks up and says, does anybody have a calendar? (laughs) Scroll, 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 scroll. scroll. (laughs) holding this amazing piece of technology that had a calendar app on it and he asks 
for a calendar. <laughs> like somebody brought a physical calendar to work. <laughs> that Blackberry, when we'd be, t- not even just a staff meeting, but if we were in studio after the, uh, the show was done and Open Ant were talking about something or Jim was talking about something, to Steve about to do and or working out whatever the solution may be, Steve would be like this and then he'd look down right into there while they're talking to him he's on his phone and then they'd have to yell at him like Steve are you paying attention uh yeah a lot going on yeah yeah what it's like we just asked you something scroll 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 uh there are there are plenty of times that uh like uh Sam said about the pendulum thing something just you hear somebody say something else and like it conjures a memory that unless they knew listened to the show knew the show nobody would get it so like you could never bring it up because no one would understand it but you sit there quietly and laugh to yourself like i mean i miss him but what day, an idiot <laughs> nobody can call in named Corey to jim no. sam without yes jim going, <laughs> yes <laughs> or like you can't you can and this goes back to like Steve being a production genius and just like nobody has a to this I've never experienced in the medium a brain like his that just functions like his did. But like if you hear somebody going, You're in my house, like you can't <laughs> not think about the Steve C acting clips. <laughs> How did your parents die? <laughs> <laughs> no 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 no. No 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 no. <laughs> That's that's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, he was the best production guy I've ever met. Hands down. Like, not even close. Yeah. Yeah. He's much better than Troy. Way better than Troy. Troy is not like he just sits there. You should see. I got to write with Steve C., the legend. I got to write with Steve C. That's one of those things that people don't even realize. I got to sit in the room with Steve C. and write. You know what it's like? You know what the writing process with Troy Kwan is like? It's like you have a court stenographer. He's just there <laughs> to write down what you say. That's his creative input to There's just no write. Forth. No, not one bit. He's terrible. So you, much, you, much worse than Steve. You give him ideas and then he just gives you different like EDM tracks to play. Like, this is not what I said I wanted at all. He just, yeah, he just puts, yeah, he just takes your idea and he puts music under it and he goes, I'm finished. <laughs> I thought he moved. I heard he moved. Yeah, he lives in Florida now. Oh, okay. But he still works yeah. on the show? He does. Okay. He does. He yeah. He okay. comes back every every now and then, but he took a three month Christmas vacation. <laughs> for the first Troy did. So he is kinda like Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, in a lot of ways. for the foreseeable future. <laughs> in the worst ways he's like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, none of the good stuff. Last thing I want to bring up, and it has nothing to do with Steve, but you guys are the only ones I think that witnessed this. John Larkett? Uh, By the way, let's talk about John Larroquette's show where he was running the bus depot. Yes. Where his music was because he was a recovering drunk. So the whole song was like that. Him and Chi McBride. Chi McBride. Yeah. What's that movie? uh, If somebody can look it up with Kirstie Alley. Madhouse. Madhouse. (laughs) Right off the top of the dome. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. That's the one. That's the one. That's a great movie. It is a great movie. That's a John Larroquette, right? John Larroquette, Kirstie Alley. Yeah, John Larroquette is a comedic tour de force throughout that entire picture. Wasn't there wasn't there a scene in there that the cat sniffed cocaine and they thought the cat yep. died? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But he was just spazzed out. Yeah. yeah. So rest in peace, Steve. Yes. Rest in peace. If you Steve have the means, I highly God recommend speed. you get one. Uh, yes. John Larroquette. <laughs> you know what was the difference maker for Steve C? What? He, and I'll tell you this. This is a style that did catch on. He was way ahead of the curve, and boy, did he get a trashing for it. But even though he got a trashing, he kept doing it after. Steve and his capris. Yeah. With remember, the remember embroidered wore- flowers on the on the, the bottom, yep. Yep. Remember, he wore those capris, and he got, tra- he got good trashing for it. He kept wearing them because he liked them. And then years later, gentlemen wearing capris is not... It's not at all something that that is that I would call uncommon these days. No, flames haven't caught on yet, though. Guy Fieri became a meme after Steve C. I think he Guy Fieri like copied his whole shit from Steve C. And now he's like a internet god. Yeah, Steve C. Would be cool. the one who ever. 
Well, I think it's cool. You don't think Guy Fieri's cool? No. <laughs> oh. I think he's a good dude. No, not no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you hate him. Oh, that's right. That he shot so vodka into your mouth. I don't yeah, think you're a fan. He forced alcohol down my throat. I was thinking of somebody else. Yeah. He's no John Larroquette. No, he's not. I'm sure. Definitely. I can't believe that they got him back for the uh, for the for reunion. The re- yeah. Yeah, because yeah, not everybody's going to be back. Nobody's no. back. It's just, just him. Yeah. Just John Larroquette. Yeah. Not Bull. Bull's not back. Bull's not back. Marsha Warfield what? was mad <laughs> that dead. she... Is she passed on? That was recent, though, right? No, yeah. the, the other guy, Mac, died recently, Mac's too. Rest yeah, the, in chick, peace. The, the chick died. Rest in peace to her. Oh, yeah. I thought she was mad that she wasn't That's asked to be part of when they were coming up with the idea. No, she's dead. Oh, okay. Very yeah. Very, very fast. Well, she yeah. had a talk show in the 90s. Like, so oh. she's, she had that big talk show money for a season, you know? So she was living pretty high. John Larroquette. Whose dog is that? It's Luke. Oh. He probably... Riley and Lisa are probably coming upstairs. Or he's I'm at Luke, he's sitting there going like, are you guys talking about Larry Cat? That guy rules. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you so much for coming in here and uh, talking a little bit about uh, Steve C. And, and more importantly, John Larry Cat. The audience yeah, who, really By the way, is, is alive, John Larry Cat. Just because that's something that gets lost in the sauce. He's alive and he's back for the Night Court reboot coming to a streaming service near you, I would assume. I think it's a <gasps> cock. Oh, shh. Is it streaming on the cock? Me and I Larry think so, Cat? Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> Where's my special guest? I guess you're gonna have to wait. Do you, After know, you pee pee. do you know who it is? No. I know I'm gonna be monumentally disappointed. <laughs> By Steve Carlisi. I came in on a Monday. That's great. <laughs> no, that never happened. That's, that's great. That's great, Carson. Taking Mondays <laughs> off like fucking Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get this place. <laughs> you could just Man, tell the boss, really I'm going right to have it. Mondays off for now. And you're the main fucking producer of the show, but now you work a four-day work week. He's Hoo-hoo. earned it. Who who Has he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steve has earned it. How do you it. get away with working four days a week if you're supposedly the main producer? Because of the work he does, the four days he's in, just, oh. I mean... And while we're at it, let me tell you how person. stupid a Steve is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We set up a very special guest for Jimmy for his huh. birthday. That was yesterday. Who's my guest? Why did Why did I get a uh, a, <laughs> a Google uh, a Google alert? A Google alert. Thank you. Yeah. About the very special guest that's going to be on the show today. Oh, that's why I'm that. asking. Do you know who the guest? I honestly is? do not. Because everybody else does. Jimmy. I do not. Oh my god. Because it, it was a Google alert uh, early this morning I or do late last night. Wouldn't Steve as Executive producer, make sure that this didn't make a Google alert anywhere. You would, you would think. Is if, my it's, spe- if it's a surprise. Where's my special guest? In about a half hour, Jimmy. Oh, not here yet. No, no. I thought, uh, no, not here yet. Could I have I gas? Everyone got the Google alert, right? Oh, yeah. I've yeah. been holding in gas. How does that happen? If you're trying to have a surprise, what? Guess. I'm anxious. No, tell me how oh it happened. Oh, my God. Yeah, you see I it, right? Get this. The special oh, don't guest. Look at your, don't look at I'm your not, I'm, I, Could someone ask Steve why it made a Google alert for real? Does he take phone calls on his days off? No, he's the, he's off. No, he's he doesn't off. even take calls. No, the executive producer doesn't take calls. In in about the last half hour of the show, I'll get a a <laughs> bunch of emails asking for today's prep sheet, like that means anything for him. Steve places the post show call. Now it's to E Rock. It used to be to Danny or Travis, but he realized they weren't giving him good information. <laughs> then he used to call me and realize I had stopped giving him good information. Well, I, I tell him we played everything, even though we didn't, <laughs> so that he just keeps removing everything off the list. <laughs> Steve's not answering. Why? He's probably sleeping. Off. It's his day off. Let me get this right. He's a man of leisure. <laughs> Let me get this right. The executive producer for the show. Now yeah. has Mondays off for how long? Indefinitely. He said for the foreseeable future. And the bosses have no problem with this. They said they legally can't do anything about it. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, Baba Booey probably takes days off whenever he feels like yeah. it. Probably once a week. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure. Why? I mean, you know, why wouldn't he? And also he decided... A four-day work week for this motherfucker! <laughs> yeah. And well, he also Ford. decided, you know, he didn't feel like doing the Opie Anthony day. website anymore. Show up week? Yeah, yeah it's rough guy, to call it a work I, I week. I just love having him around. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is this company is bizarre. <laughs> it's bizarre. How do you allow the executive producer for one of your hottest shows to just take Mondays off? 
He's the boss. He works hard. Sometimes he needs to rest the brain so he can come back on Tuesday and deliver like he always does. But rest how the does brain. He... Isn't the brain resting when he's here? <laughs> it's at home on his pillow? It's in a constant rest period. I'm a man of leisure. <laughs> what do you mean for the foreseeable future? How many... Like literally, yeah, literally, possibly does, for a year. Does Anthony and I have this many days that we never talk? No. That's well, all. Steve, what do you mean, no. Steve would check, but he's off today, <laughs> so he can't. Uh, <laughs> he's not going to get to that today. Yeah, can we just indefinitely take Mondays off? Steve would have to contact. Have we collected HR. enough day off, days hey, off like our, these guys? What about our days? Exactly. Do I, we have sick, sicky days? Well, then what day is Steve going to take off? Yeah. Wait, Steve, is, I thought this Monday thing was for a few Mondays. Like, no, 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 no. For the foreseeable future, possibly for a year, 52 weeks. <laughs> for real. <laughs> oh, yes. He, he rock for real? Yeah. 52? He gets a so, paid So our executive weekend. producer is now working four days a week. Well, before <laughs> on top on top lucky. of deciding out of nowhere, he doesn't okay. feel like doing the Opie and Anthony website anymore. Before you, Steve Carlisi, how is he helping off. our fucking show? Carlisi, before you get upset, Carlisi, <laughs> Carlisi, Carlisi. Before you get upset, he explained it to me in very justifiable terms. A couple weeks ago, he said him and his fiance are we're getting married. He said we're getting married this weekend. So this Monday and every Monday for the foreseeable future, I'm taking off. Yeah, it, 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 it's here usually now. It's I his day it. off. As soon, <laughs> soon as Steve is here, have him come into the studio. This is ridiculous. I thought it was a few Mondays. No, every Monday. Does that bother you, Ant? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm stunned. <laughs> ah, the Prius. I pick one up. If you have the means, <laughs> I highly recommend you pick one up. Steve Carlisi's <laughs> day off. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes. Bo, bo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bo, bo, bo. I'm a man of leisure. Dude, and, he wonder, <laughs> and he wonders why none of his guys respect him. He's the guy that's supposed to be setting the example, and now he has decided he doesn't need to work Mondays for a show that's really important to this company. He told that's E-Rock. That's so fucking insulting to every fucking person here. He told he is. Greg Hughes, it's Mr. Carly. <laughs> 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 How does this work for a company? Steve, Shake it up, baby, now. <laughs> Twist and shout. Yes. So the gay parade float. Yeah. <laughs> I want to eat in that restaurant. I'm going to make a fake reservation with my new <laughs> stomach. Shay <laughs> Louis. <laughs> Abe you don't Froman. you know me? I'm Abe Froman, the yeah. internet king of Jersey. Look, the Foundry logo's on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I got them. He's lost me too, man. Uh, Steve has lost me. <laughs> he told E Rock to start taking Fridays off. Oh, he did? <laughs> yes, yeah. that was his advice to E Rock. For the last few weeks, it's My been. My advice to you is to start drinking Wait. heavily. <laughs> His advice is to have the whole staff taking <laughs> yeah, days off, yes. making our lives miserable. Because, I mean, as much as we beat these guys up, they make <laughs> our jobs so much easier. So much easier. And a few of them are underpaid. So now Steve has decided he gets Mondays off, and he's now suggesting E-Rock take Fridays off. Yes. Well, that yeah. puts us in a real shitty fucking uh, position, yep, Steve. Certainly Thanks does. for uh, caring about uh, the guys that brought you up in this fucking business. God, I'm really fucking pissed as much I as we're making our, this, our, our... I'm astounded. As, as, as much as you're making the jokes, and that, and you should, because, you know, we got to keep the comedy going. I'm astounded. It's fucking bullshit. When we what found out... he told you, you he suggested that, you take that's Fridays off? That's what I'm getting to. Is it we're, because you're wearing an old Pittsburgh Pirates jersey? Throwback jersey. When uh, we found out that we had all these days, Steve was the first to hand in his schedule saying that, oh, I'm taking every Monday off. And then he's just been going around to the staff, make sure you take your days off, make sure you take your days off. He tells us Friday... At what point has he thought that it might really hurt uh, us three? Why are you guys all taking days off? We haven't yet. He's the only one no, who no, has. No, but I mean, what's the, why, was he, why would he be saying just take days off? Because we have a certain amount of days uh, How built up. How do you guys up. have so many fucking days? Because I guess XM because never marked it. Usually that doesn't happen, you know. Yeah. So I don't understand how, on top of that, you guys have even more days off. Well, that was a problem. At first, when we first got here, it used to be very informal. Don't take it, you know, try not to take too many sick days, and you can have off when the show's off. <laughs> when we got here, they go, 
well, you guys can't take off when the show's off because you have less vacation time. So at that point, we all talked to HR and said exactly how many sick days and uh, vacation days have we accumulated over the three, four years we've all been here. And Steve has 70 days. All right, listen. Steve uh, gets Mondays off. That. Iraq gets Fridays off. I, I'm, gra- I'm grabbing Wednesdays. Oh, <laughs> I get yeah. Wednesday. Middle of the week, Mid-week. nice. Turns I it want, into two short fucking like work weeks. I want Tuesdays from eight fifteen to eight twenty five. You got to <laughs> do the math. <laughs> Only it. Tuesdays. And what day you want off? Well, Sunday. I thought oh. yes. <laughs> how does but, this help our show? Janine it's, had a good one here. Uh, I guess because he's taking days off, and that's how you executive reduce. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very funny. Uh, I want <laughs> Thursdays. Oh, oh. oh yeah. A family member has days off, <laughs> and you give them crap? You're an asshole! <laughs> oh, you got that down. I fucking love that. Mm-hmm. And, and, oh, and God. What's Did you have a po- kiss for daddy? <laughs> <laughs> daddy. What's, management's, what's management's position in this whole thing? They are... They can't really do anything about it. They're obviously, when you look at them, they are extremely frustrated that this is... The way it's worked out, and but that should people they demand are... that like Steve takes a week off at a time? So then that's like you get one week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead but of every Monday really fucks up the rhythm of what we're trying to do here. It really does. Legally, they can't say you have to do this with your days. So while a rational human being would say, "Oh, well, since my job is to make the show sound better, um, maybe I won't take every Monday off." Steve, all he sees is days, so he goes, oh, days for me, days for me. Like, some of us on the staff all said, oh, well, this means that we can now take vacation when the show takes vacation. And here and there, we could take a day off. We could at least just sit on them and feel comfortable knowing that if we have an off day. It has to understand how this fucks us up. When he's gone on Monday, we then realize how shitty he is when he's here. So we need him to actually take uh, all the time yes. off. If he could have because five now, days off a week, yes, the show would run so much we better. See, like Monday, like today is great <laughs> that he's not here. But now we know that he's coming in the rest of the week, and it fucks us up. Sucks. Yes. <laughs> Life Real. goes by pretty fast. <laughs> if you don't take vacation time, you'll miss out on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rooney, oh. I'll be there for my check. On Friday. Unbelievable. (laughs) Dude, you know what? (laughs) If you have all those days, it's good to know you have them. Then every once in a while, you're like, you know what? I'm going to take a day off. But to to actually make it every Monday. The foreseeable future. (laughs) And say the foreseeable future, that's ridiculous. Like, I think if somebody. (laughs) Every Monday here on in. (laughs) This is what he said. I think if somebody told most of us you have 70 days off, we'd probably all be like, that's awesome, and realize we'll probably never actually use 70 days. 70. Steve immediately grabbed his calendar and marked 70 days that he would 70 needs. Mondays. Dude, that, that's a, before, the, before the next uh, brilliance of... Uh, Comedy. I just got to say, it's it's he's he's it's a big fuck you to me and Jimmy. Is it? E-Rock, Mind your P's and Q's, Travis. Buster, and remember who you're dealing with. <laughs> Steve C. Hey, he's just taking his days. It's the company days. He's gonna take them. Oh, fucking. <laughs> they can't take it away. Hey, Sam. From. Yeah, he's barely breaking even on his web page, and this is like free money. He, I mean, he told me. Yeah, barely guess. breaking even. He said free money. Yeah, I mean, it. This is money. It's like. It's costing him money if yeah, he doesn't I'll tell take you the free days. money. Gonna go stare at a Monet. <laughs> 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 it's Steve Carlisi's <laughs> day off. <laughs> Making me so gay. <laughs> he just hopes you guys don't see him while he's in the parade. <laughs> John Kishane. He'll steal a taxi from us. <laughs> yeah. Anthony will look over and say, Is that Steve? <laughs> Steve? What? Yes. <laughs> Look, I'm on the float with Scandinavian women or without you. Without <laughs> you. <laughs> There's Steve in his vest. Uh, yes, it's my vest. <laughs> God damn, how do you get away with it? Uh, um, how do you get away with it? God bless you. Stay in age. funny because I'm like, I'm out of my mind. It's ridiculous. I don't get it. 
You know how God pissed, bless you for the, you know the how comedy. pissed he'd be <laughs> if if it turns out now that they go to him and go, you can't do this. <laughs> he will be every Monday. He will just be crankier than he always is. I know? will tell you something. I believe Steve C. will try to sue the company if they tell him he can't take Mondays off. That's something I think. I believe that he will try to sue the company. You can speak with my attorney. <laughs> He's becoming a hindrance is what he is. Yes. He is becoming, a hindrance. Becoming? Well, I'm trying to be nice about it. He has been for a while. All right. He has. And this is just, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, these guys not only are here every fucking day. I get emails and phone calls from these guys. I'm still at work. I'm like, what? I, I already took a three-hour nap and I went on a yeah. bike ride. And this guy is, you know, jumping at the opportunity to work less. Well, he does give us the assignments before he leaves for the day. So, oh, I mean, we at least know what at to least, do. At least that's yeah. good. Yeah. Sam, you yeah. laugh in his face at this point, I hope. Oh, yes. I know. yes. <laughs> and I hope you're at that level, too. I mean. You're, you're not going nowhere. E-Rock, you can continue kissing was Steve's wrong. ass. No problem. <laughs> I'll protect you. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Do you kiss his ass? A little no, smooch? I can work with him. I don't kiss his ass. A little though. bit. You do laugh at him now, though? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm cordial enough. I'm not at the Danny level where uh, I just spit in his face, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, Where's, of, course. Yes, of course. Where's Travis? What, oh, how, do do you re- how do you handle Steve at this point? Very sarcastically. Yeah, Travis is in the Danny camp. Steve doesn't yeah, really definitely. talk to Travis either. Yeah, that's good. Like every uh, every Monday, he'll ask me to send him the prep sheet that I <laughs> yeah. make in the morning, and somehow every Monday I forget to do it until the afternoon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because I don't see why he needs it if he's sitting at home and not answering his phone. Travis told yeah. me this morning he goes. But see, that's what pisses me off the most, and we'll go back to the jokes. Is the fact. All right, it, so he's in a position where he knows he's got the company by the balls, and he's taking every Monday off, but he's not even willing to answer his fucking phone on Mondays. To do a quick little, hey, Steve, where's this? What's going on with this type thing? So you'd think the give Steve the recap of what happened on the show today is only when he's off. But <laughs> every day after the show, he asks one of us, do we, he goes to the prep sheet and says, do we play this, do we play this, do we play this? E-Rock told me that he was sitting in studio one time when Danny was sick, yeah. in studio with you guys, and he comes out of the studio after the show and says, Hey, E-Rock, what audio did we play today? And, and E-Rock goes, time. You were not answering phones. You were not checking email. You were yeah, sitting in what? studio with them. Oh, my God. <laughs> and what kind of assignments he gives you guys? Try calling him. See if you can get him on the phone. Uh, Travis. Well, we've called him about 50 times. Oh, okay. What a fucking dick. It's his day off. <clears throat> yeah, but he... he <laughs> Was he <laughs> sleeping in? <laughs> no, he's checking out a ball game. He's not even <laughs> supposed to be here today. <laughs> He never bothered telling. Remember we were talking about yesterday? Wrong movie, dickhead. What movie did Travis reference? Clerks. Nobody was talking about Clerks. He was talking about Clerks. He went to work in Clerks. Saying I'm not even supposed to be here means yeah, he went to work. So the whole fucking thing doesn't even work. You stink. If Steve had come in on oh. Sunday, it would be like Clerks. <laughs> right. If he worked six days, he works four days, though. It's more Furthest like Ferris Bueller. Furthest situation from Clerks ever. <laughs> it's wow. not at all like Clerks. He finally got a little courage to pot it up and say it on the air, and he crashed and burned Boy, on his first, at his first sortie. Well, you know, we were talking yesterday. And... Yeah, I figured you'd fucking throw it out there, huh? Wow. Oh, well. <laughs> we should just put a fucking say... mute on that microphone. <laughs> There's no need for it. Why don't you take today off? Uh, I can't. Steve already did. Yes. I want to hear about the assignments that Steve oh. gives these guys every day. Here's a problem. <laughs> the only thing Steve ever tells us to do is something that somebody else obviously told him to tell us to do, <laughs> except yeah. he's a terrible communicator. And what happens is very useful information gets filtered out when <laughs> before it hits us. Steve is the useful information <laughs> filter. And so we have to try to figure out who told Steve to tell us to do that and then go to them. And get the assignment again. Right. Like, for instance, if Rob Cross were to say, hey, Steve, have the guys do this. It's usually something that needs to get done in a legitimate request. But Steve asks Eric, me, or whoever to do it. And Eric and me look at him like, what are you talking about? Like, we can't even come. It doesn't make sense what he's asking us to do. So then we go to Rob Cross and say, hey, did you want us to do this? And Rob no. Here is it. Then he throws in those details that were left out and it all makes sense. Yes. Ah, I got you. Which wow. is why the show runs smoothly on Mondays. Oh, yeah. We've been asked by other serious employees 
well, who is Steve's fill-in when he's gone? Like, who is the guy in charge? A garbage pail. Yeah, who's, who's the guy in charge Tuesday through Friday? I mean, what, it's the same. It runs the same. It runs the same whether it's here or not, right? Yeah, that's, that's good.